This entitled aunt thinks she can get away with living rent-free in her family's house. But as drama starts to unfold because she refuses to contribute to doing housework, with the help of a dodgy doctor, she goes to extreme lengths to avoid doing any work at all. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamp show. Flashback to the year 2000 and X. June, a beautiful day, sunny, slightly below average temperature for that time of year. A nice breeze that kept us cool while we were all crammed together on school's football field. Perfect conditions for my high school's commencement exercises, aka graduation. The family members were seated, the music started. We high school seniors began the march to our seats. We sat, speeches, applause, corny dad jokes from our principal. Then the important part, the diplomas. We were called up one by one in alphabetical order. My maiden name began with a B, so my turn to walk the stage and receive my diploma came relatively quickly. Applause. Most likely only from my parents and aunt, and maybe a few claps from the families of a few friends. My family had moved, so I had actually transferred into this school nearly in the middle of my senior year and didn't have much of an established presence. I returned to my seat and happily watched my friends and classmates have their own moments. Sometime later, the final student's name was called. We turned our tassels. Another speech from the principal admonishing us to remember that we were now adults and needed to act responsibly. Wished us the best of luck in our futures. I'm assuming that was the gist of the final speech. Totally didn't pay attention. Typical teenage attitude, yada yada yada. Finally, we were officially dismissed for the last time. We all cheered. Caps were tossed. It was an amazing moment. Totally like what you see on young adult television shows and tween movies. After getting quick hugs and congratulations from my best friend's parents, I excused myself and went to look for my parents and aunt. I looked all over the field, in the parking lot, and everywhere in between. No beaming mother, no proud father, no aunt to smile and be happy for me. They were gone. Overly long backstory. My aunt was, and still is unfortunately, totally entitled and oblivious to how the world really works to boot. Growing up, I remember hearing bits and pieces of her interesting life. She had been married and subsequently divorced several times by this point. She had no concept of personal discipline or financial prudence, so she had several creditors after her. She always had something wrong with her or her life. No one understood what she was going through. She needed help. The world hated her and people were out to get her. Nothing was ever her fault. It was always someone or something else. She has two children with two different men and thinks that they can do no wrong. Despite them both eventually serving multiple stints in jail and drug rehab programs. To make a stupidly long story just a tiny bit shorter, she was an entitled dingbat. I love her because she is family, but I can't stand her now. Seriously, if she was on fire, I probably wouldn't waste my spit on her. About six months prior to my graduation, and nearly as soon as we had unpacked from our move, she ended up moving into our house. It was just her as her kids were both in their families at this point. And literally the only thing my parents ask as compensation was that she take care of some basic house chores, dishes, vacuuming, cleaning the bathrooms, etc. Honestly, I don't remember why she had to move in with us, but it was probably a financial issue of some sort as she never did have two pennies to rub together and probably got evicted. She was currently between husband at this time by the way. I could be wrong and she might have had a more legitimate reason, but I was only 17, 18 by graduation, so more or less oblivious to everything. The first couple of weeks were really fun. We would stay up on the weekends together and watch old Alfred Hitchcock and Twilight Zone shows and movies. She even taught me how to make homemade flour tortillas and real guacamole. In the beginning, she was like a big kid, almost like a sister. As an only child, this was a new concept to me. Then it began to fall apart. One day she didn't feel well, hurt her back, her hands hurt, a million ailments. It was always something, and she obviously enjoyed the limelight. She couldn't vacuum because her back hurt too badly. She couldn't wash the dinner dishes because she was sure she had arthritis in her hands. She had looked up her symptoms online and she knew what was wrong with herself. Seriously guys, we need to petition the world's governments to pass a law that people like my aunt cannot visit medical diagnosis websites. Anyway, it wasn't that she didn't want to help us around the house, which was my parents' only stipulation for her staying with 
with us rent free. It was just that she was sick or her arthritis was acting up and couldn't. Right. So all the chores my folks asked her to take care of in lieu of rent became my job. Vacuuming, cleaning bathrooms, dusting, dishes, laundry, cooking dinner, etc. Every day. On top of schoolwork and homework. Maybe that's why those six months were cloudy and fuzzy. Lack of sleep. Over the weeks and months, she had more and more doctor appointments and apparently she found one willing due to indulge her fantasy of ill health in order to get a bigger paycheck for himself. She had more and more restrictions as to what she could or couldn't do in regards to how much time standing or a maximum weight she could lift. Her doctor began prescribing her crazy amounts of pills to take for the pain, her anxiety, and goodness knows what else. Now on top of her issues, she began calling herself disabled and began demanding that we three, mum, dad and me, do things for her that she was perfectly capable of doing just a couple of days or weeks before. She needed help making her bed, making her breakfast, etc. She had no job. She would sleep until a crazy late hour in the afternoon, come downstairs to the main family television, demand that she watch her shows, do practically nothing the rest of the day besides watch TV and eat. She never seemed to have trouble waddling, without struggle or pain I might add, between the fridge in the kitchen and the living room couch, balancing snacks and sodas, then be back in bed by 9pm or so, of course demanding silence as she needed to rest to feel better. She had no hobbies, no friends, no household contributions, no discipline, no motivation. My home life was now playing out exactly like my my own ridiculously tacky soap opera starring Cinderella or something because there was always some kind of drama. My aunt having XYZ problems, my parents exasperated but never standing up for themselves in their own home, and me playing the role of some sort of whipping boy girl. My folks began catering to my auntie's every demand in order to, in their own words, keep the peace. All of my aunt's chores fell to me to complete on top of schoolwork and homework. If I ever spoke up about it, I was told to quit being a selfish brat. I needed to grow up, realize that auntie was sick, life's not fair, and I need to pitch in and be a contributing member of the family, blah blah blah. I had zero free time between school, catching up on graduation requirements, household chores, cooking dinner, and taking care of slash waiting on my aunt. Even weekends were spent with chores and homework. Eventually my dear auntie's corrupt doctor prescribed a wheelchair for her day to day activities. Apparently he thought that her back issues had developed into a serious problem, and her doctor thought it was in her best interest to not have her walking around much. By this point, I knew her doctor was a quack and shady as heck, but I figured he's still a doctor and an adult, so no need to press for a second opinion. Being young, I naively believed that surely he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he did. He wanted a paycheck. Yay. So yeah, a wheelchair. It was a ridiculous and clunky thing. She could barely navigate it around the main floor of our house, though she never had an issue climbing the stairs to her bedroom. She insisted on taking it wherever we want, and she also coerced my parents into trading in for one of their cars for an SUV in order to fit the four of us and her chair. Most embarrassing was when my mum, auntie and I would go to the grocery store. In lieu of her own wheelchair, she would always grab one of the store's electric ones. She would often forget her disability in order to walk quickly and grab something she forgot, and I can't even begin to count the dirty looks we got. It was obvious that she had no physical issues, and all she did was take a chair from someone who might truly need it. Aunt and I didn't spend much time together anymore by this point, because one, I had my end of year finals and other schoolwork prior to my graduation. Two, I literally had no free time due to all the extra chores. And three, I couldn't stand being around her anymore. This woman was, well, I can't think of a categorization for her, as it would be an insult to the fellow people, items, or things classified as such. Even to call her a Karen would be an insult to other Karens. Seriously, nothing was wrong with her physically. I had spied her at several businesses when she was out on her own, and such walking around, even carrying the store's handbag with the things she needed, walking fine, no wheelchair in sight. She might have mental issues, looking back I have strong theories, but there was definitely nothing wrong in regards to her body or bodily functions. Her back and legs might hurt, but if she would get some exercise and lose a few pounds, she might likely be relieved of those pains. If she would get off the copious number of bogus prescriptions, she would not feel tired, weak, or fuzzy all the time. 
and Red Bull and other caffeinated or alcoholic beverages are no good for anyone. Yet she seemed to be going through several of each daily, based on the number of empty cans and bottles I found in her room lately. She just used her shady doctor to continue the poor me persona. She liked the attention. So yeah, the weeks pass and now my high school graduation was looming. My parents were, at that point, over the moon at my coming commencement exercises and advancement into the grown up world. They were so proud because I worked my butt off to keep my grades high and also fulfill the graduation requirements of my new school. This state had a specific requirement that high school seniors completed and received a passing grade on a portfolio of a number of written pieces. This portfolio is normally worked on over all four years of high school. So yeah, as I had transferred in halfway through the school year, I had something like six-ish months to finish and pass what my peers had close to four years to complete. All was generally good in my world outside of the house. Inside the house was different as there was a lot of tension building. My aunt was pretty quiet in the week or so before the ceremony. She went around with a rather sour expression on her face that only got worse when a package from my grandparents her and my mom's parents arrived. They had sent me a very nice check, a beautifully monogrammed Bible, and a 24 karat gold necklace with a diamond solitaire pendant as a graduation gift. All the graduating grandkids in our family received something similar from them, though the boys in the family received a gold watch rather than a necklace. Other cards, gifts, notes, and letters came from other family members and close family friends, and it was all displayed in the living room on a console table by the stairs. The day comes. Yay, graduation. It was such a happy day. My mum did my hair in a beautiful braid, and I had a dress and shoes that I bought and paid for myself. As a finishing touch, I accessorized with my beautiful new necklace from my grandparents. When I come downstairs, my dad seemed choked up and gave me a big hug, calling me a beautiful young woman. My aunt didn't say a word, and only glared at my neck as she sat impatiently in her wheelchair. When she wheeled herself around to head to the SUV in the garage, she accidentally rammed into the side table where my graduation cards were placed, knocking almost everything onto the floor. She made some sort of half-hearted apology and commented about how our house was so small. I was determined that she wouldn't bring my day down, so I tried to ignore her mood as best I could. I simply picked everything back up and arranged everything neatly back on the table. I rode to the school with my parents and aunt, with her wheelchair of course. They dropped me off at the front entrance because I had to be there early for preparations and such, and the three of them decided to run to a nearby store for a few drinks and to kill a bit of time before the ceremony started. I had to be there two hours early. My aunt was still in a sour mood and complained that she was hot, note the beautiful weather condition of the day, and thirsty. Her back was hurting already. She needed to take her pills now. My dad sighed and told me that he promised they would get back quickly, saying they'd return long before the scheduled start time and they'd find me and let me know when they'd get back. I waved them off and I headed inside my school to take care of graduation stuff. Fast forward two hours. We students were gowned and sported the typical half cardboard, half ribbon and glue caps to our heads. It was time for everything to start, but I hadn't seen my folks arrive back yet. I figured it was no big deal. The place was pretty packed. It was the early 2000s, so no plague doctors or social distancing that we endure today. And they probably couldn't get through to let me know that they were there. We lined up and the ceremony started. Music, marching, speeches, blah blah blah. My name was called. I heard cheering and looked into the crowd to see that my family was indeed there as they promised. I flashed the obligatory smiles for the school's pictures and then walked off the stage and filed back to my seat. I spent the rest of the ceremony happily cheering for my friends and simply basked in the sunshine and happiness of the day. After we turned our tassels, were dismissed and finally released to go meet our loved ones, I was accosted by my friends and their families. My best friend's family hugged me and we all congratulate each other. Excusing myself, I began to look around for my own family. They're nowhere to be seen. I looked everywhere but I couldn't find any of them. My happy little bubble burst. The happy day suddenly disappeared and I was left with a sick feeling in my chest. Not only were my parents and aunt not there, but I had no way to get home. There was no way I could have walked home as we lived miles away in suburbia. Plus heels. Girls, I know you'll understand. All I could do was just stand
stand there in the rapidly emptying parking lot, alone and crying, wearing my graduation gown and my cap in my hand. Alright, that was part one of this epically long Entitled Parents story, I think the longest I've ever read on the channel. And if you thought this Entitled Aunt faking a sickness as if she's in a wheelchair was bad, just wait till you see what happens tomorrow. Okay seriously, who thinks it's a good idea to start pretending as if you're a disabled person just so you can get out of doing house chores? And I don't know how that doctor is still licensed. Perhaps he isn't. Sometimes you do hear these stories where it's like some bad thing happens and it's like, well, this doctor was practicing but he wasn't actually licensed. How do they get away with it? Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow with part two. Stay tuned. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.